and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Shanna Fold here with ILTV's Morning Brief. It's been a tough weekend in Israel, following Israeli Attorney General Avichai Mandelblit's announcement to indict Prime Minister Netanyahu in three separate cases. The Premier faces three counts, each of fraud and breach of trust, and one count of bribery. But Netanyahu vehemently denies the charges, vowing to fight them and continue with coalition talks. Meanwhile, Netanyahu allies are also chiming in, repeating demands to investigate the investigators and calling the attorney general a spineless puppet who is in service of a coup. Similarly, Justice Minister Amir Ohana attacked the prosecution, saying there was selective law enforcement involved. Manzelblit, however, is now expected to decide whether Netanyahu can participate at all moving forward. The AG has formed a panel looking into whether there is any legal obstacle that would bar Netanyahu from forming a government while under indictments. And according to Hebrew media, he hopes to publish the opinion by the end of the week. Typically, by legal precedent, a minister under criminal indictment must step down from their position. But a prime minister must only step down if convicted of criminal charges. And Netanyahu has consistently stated that he plans to continue in office for as long as he's allowed to. On the other hand, under the ordinary minister policy, Netanyahu is expected to announce that he's giving up his four other portfolios. On top of the prime minister position, Netanyahu currently also serves as the minister of agriculture, health, social affairs, and diaspora affairs. But now, other Knesset members and deputy ministers like United Torah Judaism's Yaakov Litzman are looking to step into Netanyahu's seat. In other news, efforts to return two Israeli citizens who remain imprisoned in the Gaza Strip are continuing. Prime Minister Netanyahu and Yaron Bloom, the coordinator for captives, are holding talks in Jerusalem on how to bring back Hisham Asaid and Avera Mangisto two Israeli civilians who have been held by Hamas for over five years. The meetings held with the Mangisto and Asaid families cover covert and open efforts to return the boys unharmed. Mangisto and Asaid, who are both thought to be mentally handicapped, wandered into the Gaza Strip and were captured by the terror group. Around the same time, Hamas also captured the bodies of two Israeli soldiers, Hadar Golden and Aaron Shal, whose families are meeting with Netanyahu as well. Hamas officials, meanwhile, deny reports of any progress regarding a prisoner swap. And the group's officials accuse Israel for the stalemate, as Israel is refusing Hamas's demands. Well, there might be a good reason. According to unconfirmed reports, in return for the two Israeli civilians and two soldiers remaining in Gaza, Hamas is demanding the release of at least 2,200 Palestinian prisoners, including at least 500 inmates who are serving life sentences and dozens of repeat offenders who were released in the 2011 Gilad Shalit exchange. The Aravad Desert extends from the Dead Sea in central Israel all the way down to Elat, in Israel's southernmost tip. And that is exactly where the Planet Arava Festival was held. The festival was held in early November and touted 150 photographers from around the world and ended with a whopping 500 photos in the final stage of the competition. The festival showed only photos taken within the Arava and also highlighted some environmental protection issues from the region. Compelling photos showed foxes hunting by night, as well as rabbits, birds, and lizards in their natural habitats. For the story and sequence category, Aviv Etzion won with one of five photos he took of two black-winged stilt birds who were in the courting process. Other photos showed the 2014 Evrona oil spill, where photographers and park rangers had gotten shots of the desert after the incident. The nature reserve was overtaken by between 3 and 5 million liters of crude oil that leaked out from a pipeline. It's considered the worst environmental disaster in Israel's history. Photographers said the black oil was an eyesore and emitted a horrible smell. Omri Yosef Omesi of Elat took the first place prize with a series of photos he took of the oil spill in 2014 and submitted this year. Congratulations to all the winners in all the various photo categories. That's all for now, but for more news from Israel, remember to like ILTV on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm Shanna Fold, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.